Good evening, I'm Azazel, and welcome to another installment of Ghostly Japan. In this episode, we'll head down to Otemachi, one of the oldest sections of Tokyo. Once a humble fishing village, today it is home to some of Japan's top financial firms and largest newspapers. But amidst the modern skyscrapers is something from old Japan. Nestled in between the gleaming towers is Masakaro Zuka, a kind of grave shrine to the severed head of a legendary figure from Japanese history, Taira no Masakado. In life, he was known for having led an uprising against the emperor, and in death, he became one of the three great onryo of Japan, a terrifyingly powerful vengeful spirit whose curse became legend. Tonight's episode is part one of this two-part series on Taira no Masakado and his kubizuka, Masakado Zuka. In this episode, we'll discuss the real-life history of the man, his fall, and the very earliest paranormal tales associated with his legend. Tonight on Ghostly Japan. In Otemachi, in between the Otemachi One Tower and the Mitsui Busan Building, is Masakado Zuka. This kubizuka, a grave for interring and enshrining severed heads, is among the most famous in Japan. Taira no Masakado, whose head is enshrined here, was a member of the powerful and influential Taira clan who died in 940 CE after revolting against the imperial court. In the nearly thousand years since his death, myriad legends about Masakado and his family, many of which are heavily steeped in the supernatural, have been told over the centuries. And his grave here in Otemachi has been famous pretty much from the start for being haunted. Especially for the supposed curse tied to this land, which claims that if the grave is allowed to fall into disrepair, or if any attempt to relocate or remove the grave is made, misfortune and calamity will befall those involved and the surrounding area. While Masakado is famous for being one of the three great onryo of Japan, he was deified in the 1300s and is worshipped to this day at several shrines. In fact, if you ever visit Masakado Zuka, you will almost certainly encounter everyday people coming to pray and give offerings here, and depending on the time of day, there might even be a line. The story of Taira no Masakado is one that is defined by its at times contradictory depictions. To some, he was a vicious, impulsive tyrant. To others, he embodies the best martial and moral attributes a Japanese warrior should strive to. For the samurai of Kanto area clans of the Kamakura and Sengoku periods, he was an inspirational figure, whose blessing was sought before going into battle. To the residents of his hometown, a virtuous and thoughtful ruler concerned for the peasant's plight. And yet for others, he is the stuff of nightmares, a powerful and vengeful spirit, cursing those who dare violate his grave. And yet again... He is a powerful guardian spirit for the city of Tokyo, whose blessing is sought by many everyday Japanese, even today. These conflicting narratives are the result of social political changes in the century since his death. A thousand years of history, oftentimes of a paranormal flavor, right here in Otemachi. To understand how this all came to pass, and how the paranormal stories have changed over the years, we'll start at the beginning with Masakado's life and eventual rebellion in the mid Heian period. Japan during the Heian period, which spanned from 794 CE to 1185 CE, was ruled by the emperor from the imperial palace in Heian-kyo, modern-day Kyoto. The power during this time lay with the aristocratic nobility of the imperial court. The bushi, the warriors, during this time were controlled by the civilian government. Bushi who served the imperial court would, over the course of the Heian period, become known as samurai. However, the age of samurai rule would not come until the founding of the Kamakura Shogunate in 1192 in the aftermath of the Genpei War. Taira no Masakado was born sometime in the early 900s, 
We actually don't know for certain when he was born. 884, 889, and 903 have all been put forward by various sources as his year of birth. As his name suggests, Masakado was a member of the Taida clan. The Taida clan were descendants of the imperial family, and specifically for Masakado, part of the branch of the Taida clan referred to as Kammu Heishi, indicating their descent from Emperor Kammu specifically. The clan was formed because the imperial family was growing too large, too many claims to the throne. So the Taida clan was formed, thereby removing these extended family members from the line of succession. Masakado's grandfather was Taida no Takamochi, the founder of the Taida clan. Takamochi was appointed by the imperial court as Suke, vice governor of Kazusa province, his title being Kazusa Suke. The governor's position was called Kami, Kazusa Kami. Kazusa, along with nearby Hitachi and Ueno provinces, were special provinces designated to be ruled by members of the imperial family. As members of the imperial family, the governors or kami of these provinces did not usually leave Heiankyo. In their absence, the day to day ruling and consequently local power was held by the suke. Takamochi would take his three sons, Taira no Kunika, Taira no Yoshikane, and Masakado's father, Taira no Yoshimasa, with him to Kazusa province. There, Takamochi's sons would take up influential local positions and marry the daughters of prominent local families. Both Kunika and Yoshikane married daughters of Minamoto no Mamoru, the daijo of Hitachi province. Jo is the rank below suke. The jo rank was further subdivided into different classes, dai indicating upper jo rank. Mamoru was a large landowner in addition to his official position in the local Hitachi province. Yoshimasa would marry Masakado's mother, the daughter of Inukai no Harue, a wealthy resident of Shimosa province. Even after Takamochi's appointment as Kazusa Suke ended, his sons would remain behind instead of returning to Heiankyo. Kunika would eventually take his father-in-law's position as Hitachi Daijo, Yoshikane would follow in his father's footsteps as Kazusa Suke, and Yoshimasa would become for a time Chinjufu, commander of the military forces in the area. When Masakado was either 15 or 16, he was sent to Heiankyo to serve Fujiwara no Tarahira, Tarahira was a powerful and influential figure in the imperial court, and this position under Tarahira was one that it was hoped would open doors for Masakado, who had hopes of either joining the Keibishi, a paramilitary police group tasked with keeping the peace in Heiankyo, or an appointment as a suke or a jo. However, after a long period of service to Fujiwara, according to some sources 12 years, Masakado remained a lowly guard in the household. Masakado then leaves the service of Tarahira and heads back east. The exact reason is unclear for his departure from the capital. He may have become disillusioned with his failure to attain an appointment, or he may have left because of the death of his father. In any event, something happens shortly after his return from the capital that sours Masakado's relationship with his uncles. The exact reason for this rift differs depending on which source you are following. One narrative says that the conflict began over a dispute over the inheritance of Yoshimasa's holdings, namely that Masakado's uncles, Kunika and Yoshikane, attempted to take over all of their late brother's property, leaving Masakado with little to nothing. Another theory is that the conflict originated from a dispute between Minamoto no Mamoru and Taira no Maki, another landowner in Hitachi, that Mamoru was often at ends with. Masakado was said to be close with Maki and attempted to intervene in Mamoru and Maki's dispute by interceding as a mediator. According to some sources, Masakado's wife was Maki's daughter. The identity of Masakado's wife is not definitively known. And another theory is that the conflict began over a fight between Masakado and his uncle Yoshikane over a woman. In some narratives, it is over the affections of one of Mamoru's daughters. In others, it is over Yoshikane's daughter, who is sometimes claimed to be Masakado's wife. In this narrative, Yoshikane disapproved of the match between his daughter and Masakado, perhaps because Masakado had failed to attain any rank or position after returning from Heiankyo. Against her father's wishes, his daughter is claimed to have eloped with Masakado. 
And yet another of the major theories is that the conflict was the boiling over of some long-standing resentment Mamoru had against Yoshimasa and consequently Masakado for not marrying one of his daughters like Kuniga and Yoshikane had. Whatever the real reason was, the conflict became violent in March 935 CE, when Masakaro and his entourage were attacked at Nomoto in Hitachi province by three of Mamoru's sons. Masakaro managed to turn the tables on his attackers and killed all three sons. Afterwards, he marched on Mamoru's lands and burned down their stronghold. Masakaro's uncle, Kunika, was killed either at the conflict at Nomoto or when Masakaro burned down his house. In November 935 CE, enters Taira no Yoshimasa. This isn't uh, his father, this is just a, another individual who happens to have the same name as Masakado's father, but spelled differently. This Yoshimasa is possibly the son of Taira no Takamochi and a concubine. He's not believed to have accompanied his half-brothers initially when they came out with their father, Whenever he did come out, he is said to have married one of Mamoru's daughters and would be another of Masakado's uncles. However, some sources claim he is actually Masakado's cousin. The exact relationship of this Yoshimasa to Masakado is not completely known. In any event, this Yoshimasa seeking to avenge the deaths of the sons of Mamoru and Kunika rallied a force together and engaged Masakado in Hitachi province. The battle went poorly for Yoshimasa and his forces were routed. An alliance was then formed between Yoshimasa, Yoshikane, and Taira no Saramori, the son of the slain Kunika. On July 22nd, 936 CE, a large army was formed from the three forces in Kazusa province and began marching on Masakado. Near the border of Hitachi and Shimotsuke provinces, they were engaged by Masakado's forces. Tales allege that Masakado had only about a hundred soldiers, whereas the combined army of Yoshimasa, Yoshikane, and Saramori had several thousand. Somehow, Masakado managed to defeat this far larger army, inflicting horrible losses on the combined forces. But, Masakado was not satisfied with this victory. He pursued his enemy across Shimotsuke province, forcing the survivors to seek refuge in the provincial capital. There, Masakado surrounded his estranged family members in the provincial seat of power. Despite having them dead to rights, Masakado, perhaps having a change of heart, or maybe fearing the consequences of killing his uncles, broke his siege and let them escape. Shortly after returning home to Shimosa province, Masakado was served with an imperial summons to report to the capital to answer for his actions at the battle at Nomoto, the result of a complaint filed by Momoru over the death of his sons. Masakado went to Heiankyo to give his own account of what had happened. Although the court decided against Masakado, he was granted amnesty as part of Emperor Suzaku's Genpaku coming of age. Almost immediately upon returning home a second time, Yoshikane began attacking Masakado. On August 30th, while holding up images of Masakado's father and grandfather, Yoshikane's forces launched an attack. According to some sources, the sight of the portraits demoralized Masakado's men and led to their defeat. As Masakado and his men retreated, Yoshikane pillaged and burned Masakado's domain and captured Masakado's wife and children. Lending credence to the theory that Masakado's wife was Yoshikane's daughter, Yoshikane brought Masakado's wife and children back to Kazusa province, where shortly afterwards, probably with help from Yoshikane's sons, Masakado's wife and children escaped and made it back to Masakado. Revitalized by their safe return, Masakado manages to fend off another attack by Yoshikane in September. Yoshikane retreats to Mount Tsukuba, while Masakado appeals to the imperial court via his former lord, Fujiwara no Tarahira, to intervene. In December, the imperial court issues a Daijo Kampu, an official order to arrest Yoshikane and those who aided him in attacking Masakado. In March of 938 CE, Saramori attempts to escape to Kyoto to appeal to the imperial court that it is, in fact, Masakado who is the real enemy. Masakado catches wind of this and gives chase with a hundred horsemen. At the Chikuma River in Shinano province, they catch up with Saramori and his men. Masakado's forces descend on the Saramori men and soundly defeat them. In some narratives, they manage to kill all but Saramori, who just barely manages to escape. 
In Kyoto, Saramori appeals to the imperial court, who finally in June issues a summons to Masakaro to appear before the court to clarify the issue. Masakado's power and reputation in the eastern provinces has grown since Saramori fled, and he ignores the summons and continues to pursue Saramori loyalists who are forced to continually move to evade capture. Yoshikane attempts one last strike at Masakado's forces, hoping that attacking Masakado's encampment at night and using information from informants will be enough to tip the battle in his favor. It is not, and Yoshikane's forces are repulsed and routed. Yoshikane dies humiliated in June of 939 from illness, a broken man. Masakado's enemies are on the run, and his prestige and power are riding high. Given his newfound popular support, he began attempting to increasingly mediate in disputes concerning taxation or other issues among government officials and various powerful parties in the area, despite no official government appointment to do so. At the end of 939, an ally of Masakado's Fujiwara no Haruaki in Hitachi province was at odds with the local government. Haruaki was accused of embezzlement and failure to pay his taxes. When the government issued an arrest warrant, Haruaki fled to the safety of Masakado's domain, and along the way, he plundered Hitachi government warehouses, delivering the stolen goods to Masakado as he asked for protection. The Hitachi government demanded Masakado turn over Haruaki to them. In response, Masakado took a thousand-man strong force to Hitachi to persuade them to drop the charges against Haruaki. Incensed, the Hitachi government levied a three thousand-man strong army and attacked Masakado's forces. The Hitachi forces were crushed by Masakado's smaller force and fled back to the provincial capital of Hitachi province. Masakado's forces then laid siege and plundered the surrounding area. The governor of Hitachi, seeing the futility of resisting further, surrendered, and the Hitachi government fell to Masakado. Whether he had originally intended to or not, Masakado had crossed a line. He had committed rebellion. His close advisor, Prince Okio, is claimed to have told Masakado after the sacking of the Hitachi government that the penalty for overthrowing one province is the same as the penalty for overthrowing many. Perhaps heeding his friend's advice, Masakado then took over Ueno province and Shimotsuke province. In January of 940 CE, Masakado declared himself new emperor of the eastern provinces, citing his own descent from the imperial bloodline and referencing a supposed encounter with a shrine maiden who claimed she was a messenger of the god Hachiman, a guardian deity of warriors, second to Amaterasu as a guardian deity of the imperial family. According to legend, this shrine maiden bestowed the title of Shinno, new emperor, on Masakado. The governors of the remaining Kanto area provinces fled, leaving Masakado in control. Masakado, as new emperor, appointed his brothers and close friends as governors of the Kanto area provinces. Masakado also sent a letter to his former lord, Fujiwara no Tadahira, to communicate to the imperial court in Heiankyo that although he was now emperor of the eastern provinces, he still recognized Emperor Suzaku as the rightful emperor in the west. Masakado claimed he had no desire or intention to threaten the Heiankyo government or territory. This news was not well received in Heiankyo. While Masakado's rebellion was occurring, the imperial court was also contending with Fujiwara no Sumitomo's pirate rebellion in the west. The dual threats were perceived as an existential threat, and there was fear that the two rebellions might be a coordinated effort. The imperial court ordered that all shrines and temples in the country pray for the defeat of the rebellions. A bounty was placed on Masakado's head, and on March 5, 940 CE, an imperial army was organized and dispatched to put down Masakado's rebellion, led by Fujiwara no Tadafumi. At the same time, Masakado was leading a 5,000-man force through Hitachi province in a hunt for the elusive Saramori and other surviving enemies. After failing to locate Saramori, Masakado was forced to demobilize the majority of his force, which was composed to a great extent of farmers and other workers who needed to get back to tend to their fields. In a monumental case of bad timing, just after this demobilization, word came in that Saramori had linked up with Fujiwara no Hidesato, an imperial loyalist from Shimotsuke province. Together they had mustered a 4,000-man force. Masakado, after demobilization, had only a thousand men at his disposal. 
Masakado had beaten worse odds before, though, and on March 12th, 940 CE, set out to engage the enemy. Contact was first made between Hidesato's force and a column of Masakado's force under the command of Fujiwara no Harumochi. Unfortunately for Masakado, Harumochi, over-eager and overly aggressive, attacked Hidesato's force alone, without informing Masakado. Hidesato's force overwhelmed Harumochi's forces and defeated them. Masakado's troops were now even more outnumbered. Hidesato and Saromori pressed the attack. While Masakado's forces fought bravely, they were slowly overwhelmed by the enemy's overwhelming numbers. Eventually, Masakado was forced to retreat back to his stronghold in Shimosa province. Hidesato and Saromori regrouped and took in reinforcements before pushing ahead on March 24th and attacking Masakado's stronghold, burning it to the ground. Masakado attempted to muster more troops, but in the end, he could only manage to field 400 men. On March 25th, 940 CE, the final battle began. The wind was favorable for Masakado, allowing them to rain deadly arrows down on the advancing forces of Saromori and Hidesato, inflicting heavy losses on their men. Saromori attempted to effect a breakthrough but was repulsed. For a time, it looked as if Masakado would once more win a miraculous victory, as the lines of the Imperial Loyalists faltered and morale began to crack. Then the wind suddenly changed, and Hidesato and Saromori rallied their forces for a counterattack. Masakado is said to have rushed to the front of the battle on horseback to meet the counterattack head on. There are various stories on just how exactly Masakado died. In one account, he is shot through the forehead with an arrow as he raced to the front on his horse. In another, a whistling arrow struck him in his temple and killed him. And yet, in another account, Hidesato, using a holy sword gifted to him by a shrine in Utsunomiya, struck down the new emperor himself. In any event, the death of Masakado meant the end of his rebellion. The nascent empire of the new emperor had lasted only a few short months. Masakado's co-conspirators would be hunted down and killed, and his close relations were not to be spared either. Masakado was beheaded and his head brought to Heiankyo. Masakado is the first recorded case of Gokumon being used. Gokumon was an ancient punishment where the offender was to be beheaded, their head displayed for all to see, their property confiscated, and the body not allowed to be given Buddhist funerary rites or buried. While Masakado had been defeated before the Imperial Army had even reached the Kanto area, news that it was on the way may very well have played a role in encouraging those who had been neutral until this point to throw their lot in with the Loyalists at a critical juncture. Likewise, it may have hampered Masakado's efforts to gather more men before the final battle. However, this is not the end of Masakado's story. In fact, this is where the story takes a turn into the paranormal. Because, as Masakado's head was left out on display for all to see, the residents of Heiankyo noticed something very peculiar about the head. The head did not rot. His eyes never closed. Some accounts claim they even blinked, and it appeared that he was gnashing his teeth. At night, the eyes of the head were said to dart around, searching, as the severed head shouted, where is my dismembered body? Bring it here. Reattach my head to my body and let's fight once more. Onlookers became terrified and eventually a poet came out to recite a poem in the hopes of quelling the angry spirit of Masakado. After the poet had finished his waka poem, the head of Masakado let out a horrible laugh, and then began to shake as a brilliant light began to shine from the head, before the head suddenly flew up into the sky, taking off in an easterly direction for home. There are many legends about what happened next. One tale preserved by Mikubi Jinja in Gifu Prefecture claims that the priests at Nangu Taisha, aware that Masakado's head was headed back to Kanto, and convinced that if he made it back, his rebellion would start again, prayed to their enshrined kami to intervene. The kami answering their prayers shot Masakado's head out of the sky with an arrow, and the spot the head landed on is where the Mikubi shrine was built to quell the spirit of Masakado. The more well-known tale, and the one attached to Masakado Azuka, says that the head landed here in what was at the time Shibasaki village. 
In some accounts, Masakado's head was heading for Iwai, modern-day Bando City in Ibaraki Prefecture, which was his home and stronghold in life, and also where his body had been buried. But his head ran out of energy on the way and fell short, ending up in sleepy Shibasaki village in Musashi province. In any event, the terrified villagers washed Masakado's head and then buried him in a large earthen mound. At the time, the shore of Tokyo Bay reached much further inland, and it was said that the beach could be seen from Masakado's grave mound. This is the origin of Masakado Zuka. Afterwards, the villagers began reporting seeing the apparition of either Masakado's floating head roaming the grounds at night, or in other accounts, the headless apparition of the body of Masakado walking around, in either case looking to be made whole once again. Over the next several hundred years, the grave mound of Masakado gained a reputation for being haunted and cursed, and villagers grew to blame the haunted grave mound for famines, crop failures, earthquakes, and other disasters that befell them, giving us the earliest origins of the legend of the curse of Masakado's vengeful spirit. But big changes are coming for Taira no Masakado's grave mound in the early 1300s, as a traveling Buddhist priest has heard rumors of the haunted grave mound and the terrors visited upon the residents of Shibasaki village. His actions will forever change the legacy of Taira no Masakado, leading to the creation of an enduring legend that will have a profound and lasting impact on Japanese folklore and popular culture, one that reverberates into the present. Thank you for listening. In the next episode, part two of our two-part series on Taira no Masakado and Masakado Zuka, we will explore the enshrinement of Taira no Masakado, the evolution of the paranormal legends associated with him, and their effect on Japanese media and popular culture. We will also discuss modern paranormal claims associated with Masakado Zuka. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to see more, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Thank you, and see you in the next installment of Ghostly Japan.